This is Tamara from Mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet three different kinds of egg cozies, all of which are free patterns you'll find on Mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description where you will find links to all the written patterns, as well as right and left-handed video tutorials, and links to all the supplies needed, as well as any other tutorials that I'll reference here today. The three patterns that I'll be covering are the Sleepy Bunny Egg Cozy, which you can see right here. And these are empty. I just brought down one egg because I don't actually have any boiled eggs right now. This is a raw egg. But you can see a large egg pops right in there. They sit up. Very cute. So those are the Sleepy Bunnies. There's also the Simple Flower Egg Cozies right here. A very simple flower, essentially. And I, after I made these, I realized if I'd made both pieces in yellow, I think it would look quite a bit like a daffodil. So you can have fun with those colors, obviously, for all of these. And then, of course, there are the octopus egg cozies, because it's moogly, and why not? I just had to. So you can use your own embellishments with these. I just rated my button drawer for buttons for the octopuses, uh, or octopi, however you want to say it. For the bunnies, I used my Cricut to print out some iron-ons, but of course, you can use a little bit of scrap yarn or embroidery floss or buttons to dress them up however you like. You can have a lot of fun with these basic patterns. In addition to the Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie that I used to make these, you'll need a USG or four millimeter hook, same size hook for all of them, as well as stitch markers, scissors, yarn needle, your standard crochet supplies. Again, I used Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie for all of these, but if you don't have that, Lily Sugar and Cream makes a great substitute. So let's go ahead and get started making some egg cozies. Okay, so up first is the Sleepy Bunny Egg Cozy, two of which you can see here laid flat. Again, you can use any colors for these you like. And all of these egg cozies are gonna start out the same way with a magic circle. We go around our finger twice towards us, slip our hook under both of those loops, grab the one in back and pull it just under the front one, yarn over, and pull through, just a quick chain here. You can see I'm working a little tightly. I'm not going to count that as my first chain. This just locks our magic circle together. So now I'm going to actually start crocheting. Now all of these egg cozy patterns are worked in a spiral. So this chain at the, at the beginning here is really the only first, uh, really the only turning chain that you'll use through this pattern. There will be chains used for other purposes, but we're going to keep working in a spiral. So we chain one, go into that ring under both of those loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and make a single crochet. Now this is our first single crochet of the round, so I'm going to come back and add a stitch marker to this. When we work in a spiral, I always recommend using a stitch marker in the first stitch of each round so you don't lose track. It can be very easy when working in a spiral to lose track of what round or what stitch you're on. So let's continue to crochet our single crochets in the magic circle here. We need a total of six of them. So there's two, there's three, and now that there's a few stitches in there, I can go ahead and pull my finger out because that circle is now stabilized. And I'm also going to go ahead and put that stitch marker in here before I forget. Just wanna get a stitch marker right in that very first single crochet we made. Then I've got three more single crochets and I want to continue to work around both the ring and that tail end. When we pull that tail end, that's what's going to close up our ring nice and tight. So there's four, five, and six. Now we're not going to join with a slip stitch. When we're working in a spiral, that's part of it too. We don't join with a slip stitch and we don't chain at the beginning of each round. So at this point, you'll wanna go ahead and take that tail and use that to just pull that circle nice and tight. Then when you weave in that end, you want to make sure to go back and forth with the needle a couple different directions to really lock it in. Get that back on my hook here. All right, so for round two, we're going to start with two single crochets in each stitch around. So we're going to not chain, not join, just go right into, let me get that tail out of the way there, go right into that very first stitch there and make another single crochet. Now this is the first single crochet of round two. So at this point, I want to take that stitch marker out and move it up to this stitch that we just made, like so. There we are. Then I'll work a second single crochet right in that same stitch. And I will continue to do that around. So since we had six single crochets in the first round by working two single crochets in each stitch of the second round we'll have 12 stitches there at the end of round two so i will see you as soon as we've got all 12 of those stitches made 
okay, here we are at the end of round two and I've got 12 stitches made. And you can see here why it's so important to have that stitch marker. Without that stitch marker, I wouldn't have a great way to be able to tell uh, if that was just the next stitch and I needed to keep going or if I was done with my round. Uh, it gets a little bit trickier the bigger you get too. So let's move on to round three. Round three, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. We don't have to chain one or join or anything. We just single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochets in the stitch after that. So one, then two, one, then two, one, then two, all the way around until we have 18 single crochets at the end of round three. When you work that first stitch, don't forget to go ahead and move that stitch marker right on up so that we can keep track from round to round. There we are. So there's one stitch in the first stitch. We'll do two in the stitch after that, just single crochets. There we are. And then one in the one after that. And two in the one after that. So you just continue that pattern all the way around for a total of 18 stitches in round three. So I'll see you when we're ready for round four. Okay, so here we are at the end of round three and we've got our 18 single crochets made. For round four, this is going to be our last round of increases. So for round four, we'll do two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches after that. So two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around so that at the end of round four, you should have a total of 24 stitches. So we start, even though we're going to put two stitches in that first stitch there, I wanna go ahead and move that stitch marker up as soon as I've made the very first one, like so, there we are. Then I'll go ahead and put a second stitch right in that first stitch there. And then just one stitch in the stitch after that and one stitch in the stitch after that. There we are. So two in the next, one, two, and then one in each of the two after that one. There we are, and one. So continue that pattern on around and you should have 24 stitches at the end of round four and I'll see you when we're ready for round five. Okay, so now we've finished round four and we've got 24 single crochets in our last round starting if you start counting with that marked stitch right there. Rounds one through four of all three of these egg cozies are exactly the same. You'll change colors, of course, depending on what you're making, but um, rounds, rounds one through four, exactly the same for all of these egg cozies. It's in round five that we start departing to make the different types. The Sleepy Bunny egg cozy, however, is the simplest at this point. We're just going to start working even. So for rounds five through 14, we're just gonna single crochet in each stitch around. You still want to mark that first stitch so that you know when you've gotten through rounds 14. We'll just go ahead and move that stitch marker right on up there, but otherwise just crochet even. That means one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Keep on working in your spiral until you've got 14 rounds made, and then we will work on our ears. Okay, as you can see here, I've only got a couple of rounds worked even, but I wanted to make a note here for beginner crocheters. If you crochet in the round like this, you might find as you're working even and you get this great basket shape, which is what we want, that it looks like you're crocheting from the inside. This is the back side of the stitches, and right now it's curled up so that you're crocheting from the inside. If you find this happening, not at all a big deal, not a problem. In fact, this will make it a little bit easier to weave in that end. But before you finish, you want to go ahead and just flip that the other way around, like so, so that then you're crocheting from the outside of our little bunny. So. If we pull up one of these ones I've finished here, actually I think I'll pull up the purple, it's a little easier to see. You can count starting from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen rounds. As you come around and you get right up to that stitch marker on round 14, that's when we're going to make the bunny ears. So for the sake of time here, I'm going to say I have now finished 14 total rounds and I'm ready to make my ears. You can see I've got the stitch marker in the next stitch, so I have finished my round. To make the ears, we're going to start with a chain of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then we're going to skip the chain closest to the hook, and here I really like to work into this bottom hump of the chain, not under the top two loops like you might normally see, but I really like to work into the bottom loops for most projects, but particularly for this one. 
So we'll skip the chain closest to the hook. We'll go to the next one. And we're just going to half double crochet in each of these remaining six chains. So there's one and two and so on and just continue until you have worked a half double crochet in each one of these chains. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did use my Cricut to create the embellishments for this and I thought it turned out pretty cute. And if you go to the written pattern, there is a photo tutorial for how to do that yourself. However, if you don't have a Cricut, it's a great opportunity to pull out some safety um, buttons. You wouldn't want to use safety eyes because they have little posts that poke in and then you couldn't get the egg in, but some um, you know cute little buttons or little, like I say, little scraps of thread or embroidery floss and just really have fun creating your own little faces. So here we have our six half double crochets. So then we're going to slip stitch in the next five stitches of round 14. So at this point, I will go ahead and pull out that stitch marker. We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to find the next stitch here back in row 14 and just work a slip stitch right in it. And we're not going to be coming back to work into that slip stitch, so it's fine to go ahead and make it nice and tight. We don't need to leave room for our hook to get back in there. So there's two, three, four, and five. There we go. And then we're going to make our second ear. This was sort of just that little space right there in between our ears. So we, again, chain seven. There we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip the chain closest to the hook and half double crochet in the next six. Now you can see I am working very tightly here. I'm using a relatively small hook, a four millimeter hook with a worsted weight yarn, and that is very much on purpose. While it puts a little bit of extra strain on the hands to work so tightly, sort of amigurumi style here, it does create the really nice solid fabric that you want for your egg cozies. You want them to be a little stiffer and sort of almost stand up on their own a little bit. And of course, if you are doing the Cricut uh, iron-ons, as I did for my faces, you'll want to make sure that you have a really nice solid 100% cotton fabric that you can iron onto. I would not recommend using uh, leftover worsted weight um, acrylic for these if you are going to do the iron-ons. Otherwise, of course, you can dive into your stash a little bit. So there's our half double crochets for our second ear. So then we simply break the yarn. Let me grab my scissors here. There we are. So I like to leave a few inches there so I can weave in my ends really nicely. And then I am going to pull that loop right on up out of the stitch there so that we've got our end standing up. I'll put that on my yarn needle. And then we are going to seamless join to the next stitch of round 14. So you can see right there is the last one we slip stitched into. I'm going to go into the next stitch with my yarn needle under both of those loops. Pull that down so that it's nice and tight there right up to my project, right up to round 14. Go right back into the middle of that last half double crochet made. Let me sort of pull that out of the way there, right between those two loops, and pull that through. And you can see that creates a really nice seamless join there. And then of course, I can weave in that end as well. And that's how you make the Sleepy Bunny Egg Cozies. After that, it's just dressing them up to your own taste. Okay, so up next are the Simple Flower Egg Cozies seen right here. You can see this one does require two colors, unless of course you wanna make it all in one color, it's up to you. Uh, we start with the green or whatever you want your leaves to be, and then we add the flower color later. So again, rounds one through four are exactly the same as in the uh, Sleepy Bunny Egg Cozy. So then we're ready for round five. Remember round four, we have 24 single crochets made. At this point, however, I'm going to go ahead and remove the hook from the loop. So I'm going to pull up my hook here, sort of set it aside so it doesn't roll away on me. And I'm going to secure this loop with another stitch marker. So I've got a stitch marker in my first stitch of the round, so I know where that is. And now I've got a stitch marker in that loop just so I can't accidentally pull my work back out. Now we are going to turn. So we want to be working from the wrong side, the back side of that little circle we've made rounds one through four. And we're going to add our flower rounds now. So I'm going to put that down for a second and pick up my flower color. I think I'll make a purple one because I haven't made a purple one of these yet. Find my end there, there we are. And then what I want to do is I want to work this entire round in the back loop only, but remember we're coming from the bottom of our circle. So the back loop only, if we look at that top V, 
is going to be the loop of that V that is furthest away from us as crocheters. It doesn't matter if we flipped it while we'd be working from the wrong side, the back loop is still the one that's furthest away. So from the bottom of your circle, we want to join to the last round of round four, so that very last stitch we just made where our loop is coming out of with a single crochet. So there are a few different ways to do this. One of my favorite ways is to put either a slip knot or just a twisted loop. You can see I just twisted the yarn and pop it right on my loop, on my hook rather, right there. Then I'm going to insert my hook under the back loop of that last stitch we made in our circle there, so the one furthest away from me. Simply yarn over, yarn over and pull through to make a single crochet. So that's the first single crochet of our flower rounds. So since we're still working in spirals, I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker right in that stitch as well. We're using a few more stitch markers with this one. Then I simply continue to single crochet in the back loop of each one of these stitches around. So since we had 24 stitches in round four, this round here for our flower will also have 24 stitches. Just again, remember to only go under that back loop. We're going to need to come back and work into those unused front loops to make those leaf petals. So just continue working your way around for 24 stitches and I will see you at the end of flower round one. Okay, so I've almost finished flower round one, but I wanted to point out I've got one single crochet in each stitch here, but now I've come to that marked stitch, which was the first stitch of our previous round when we were making that base. And we don't wanna lose this marker, but we do need to move it out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out of this stitch, but then I'm going to move it to that front loop only, right there, so that's there when we need it. For now, it's just the last stitch of this round. So I'll go ahead and make that final single crochet right in there. So let me move these yarns out of the way a little bit here so we can see. There we are, and get ourselves all sorted. So that's the end of round one of the flower. So after that, rounds two through uh, seven, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch around. So you can see I here I put my hook right in that first stitch already. I'm just gonna go ahead and make that single crochet. And since this is the first stitch again of this round two of our flower, I'll move that stitch marker right on up. But otherwise, we're just single crocheting even or one stitch in each stitch around until we have seven rounds of the flower made. So if I put this down here, you can see if I pull these leaves down out of the way, that would have been our flower round one when we were working into that back loop only of our green there from the bottom. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds total. So we just work our way up for the flower. So I'm going to do a couple more stitches here and then I'll show you how we finish off the flower and then we can go back to our leaves. Okay, so obviously I don't have seven full rounds here, but for the sake of time, we're going to pretend that I do. I've worked my seven rounds, so it's actually this tall, and now it's time to finish off. So the way I like to finish off at this point, so we get a really nice smooth end to our spiral, is to go ahead and slip stitch in the next stitch. That would have been the marked one. There we are. And then you can go ahead and break this yarn. Okay, so with that yarn broken, we go ahead and do the same thing. We pull that loop right on up and do our seamless finishing here with our needle. So to do this one, we'll find that next stitch, go right under there with our needle, and then right back in the top of the stitch we just came out of, like so. And then we can weave in our end. So that just creates a little bit more of a gentle finish for our spiral. With that done, it is time to head back to our leaves. So do you remember we turned over to work from this side to do the leaves? Now we wanna flip over again so that we're coming from the top of the flower looking back down at our leaves. So let me go ahead and pull that stitch marker out of our active loop here and get our hook right back in the loop of our leaves. And anytime you take your hook out and need to put it back in a loop, you can check to make sure that the loop hasn't been twisted by giving it a tug and making sure that it is the loop in front of your hook that moves back down into the stitch. That way you know your loop itself hasn't been twisted. So now we're going to start working into those unused loops of round four. So for our leaves round five, we are going to skip the next stitch, so that marked stitch right there with our stitch marker, and at this point we can go ahead and take that one out. And then we will work six double crochets in the next one. So skip that loop right there and go to the next one and work six double crochets. There we are. 
Okay, and now we have our six double crochets. Then we will skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next. So look for that little loop there, go to the next one and work a single crochet. And we've got our first little leaf there. Then we are going to do that again. We skip the next stitch and six, six double crochets in the loop after that. All right, and now we've got our second petal made or our second leaf. So we're going to skip the stitch after that and single crochet in the stitch after that. And that's what we're going to do all the way around until we've got a total of six petals made. So I'll keep working on mine and I'll see you when we're ready to finish off our leaves. Okay, so I've continued crocheting my leaves and I've just finished the last one, but I haven't done the skip one in single crochet because I've worked all my way around. And if you look closely here, you can see there's one more stitch here to skip, but then we're right at the stitch where we started working from. So what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and break this yarn. Pull that loop up on through. Put it on our uh, yarn needle here. And then I am going to seamless join right down into that stitch there basically where it came out. So it doesn't really matter where, wherever is convenient for you, just slide that right on in there. Go right back through the center of that last double crochet made there, just right at the top. You can pull that down tight and weave in your ends. And there you have it, a simple flower egg cozy. Like I say, you just wanna make sure you turn so that you work the flower from the outside here and then turn again so you can work the leaves from the top. And that's all there is to that one. Okay, and last up, are our octopus egg cozies. And these take just a little bit more yarn than the other ones. Um, the other two called for about 20 yards of yarn each. This, these use about 25. And you also can, of course, add some fun buttons or embellish them however you like. And we also have these really fun curly cues on the bottom. Crocheting curly cues is surprisingly easy, so I'll show you how to do that as we make this one. All right, so just as in the other ones, rounds one through four are exactly the same. We've got 24 single crochets made and we're ready for round five. Now this round five, we are going to work back loop only single crochets in each stitch around without turning. So we've got our 24 stitches. I've got my marked stitch here for the first stitch of the next round. I'm just gonna go right under that back loop only and make my first single crochet for round five. And then I wanna make sure, of course, to move that stitch marker right on up and then just back loop only, single crochet, all the way around. So I will see you at the end of round five. Okay, so I have finished my round five, and you can see there's that unused front loop that we're going to come back and work our tentacles into later. But rounds six, six through seven are all very familiar. We're just going to work evenly, single crochets all the way around, this time under both loops. So we can just go ahead and go right into that first stitch there. Again, under both loops, we're done working in the back loop only. Move our stitch marker up, and then just continue to work even until we've got a total of 11 rounds made, which you can see what that looks like right here. There we go, if I hold the tentacles out of the way, we're just making just like when we made our bunnies. We work through round 14. For these, we wanna work through round 11. They're just that little bit shorter. Of course, you can make them taller if you like too. So continue to crochet around until you've got your 11 rounds made, and then we'll come back and make our tentacles. Okay, now I don't have 11 rounds done here, but again, for the sake of time, we're going to pretend I do. To finish off the top portion of our octopus here, we're going to do exactly the same as we did with our flowers. When we finish round 11, we will slip stitch in the next stitch, and go ahead and pull that stitch marker on out of our way here, and then we will break our yarn, Pull that end on through and seamless join to the next stitch. Then we'll be ready to add our tentacles. So we just go under the next stitch there, find the center of the stitch that yarn came out of and go right down through there. For the seamless join as well as the magic circle, front loop only, back loop only, and any of the other uh, trickier bits that you've seen here today, there are separate video tutorials for this linked at the link in the description. You can, of course, always go to mooglyblog.com as well and simply search Egg Cozy Tutorials. So there we have it. 
Now we're ready to add our tentacles. Now we've been working our way up this way and sort of like the flower, we're now going to turn. So we're working from the top down so we can kind of see into the cozy here as we're working and we want to work in those unused loops from round four to make our tentacles. So I will go ahead and pull up my yarn here again. And I use the same color for the body and the tentacles, but of course you can mix it up and have fun. And then it doesn't really matter what loop of round four we join to. I like to keep, when you're working in the round like this, there's a little bit of a jog uh, when the rows change, so to speak. So I like to keep that in the back so it just seems like a good place to join to. So anywhere back here though is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch. So I just wanna go right into that unused loop, yarn over with my new yarn and make a slip stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that one down tight so that it is nice and attached. And then of course I'll weave in that end later. Now I am going to chain 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then we are going to skip the chain closest to the hook and we're going to continue working in these um, third bottom loops, if you will, of the chains, uh, just as we did when we made the bunny ears. So after we skip the one closest to the hook, we are going to work three single crochets in each of the remaining chains. So we skip that one, come to the next one. There we are, and there's one, two, and three. So that's just our first chain, then we go to the next chain and do the same thing, three single crochets in that one. By working three single crochets in each of these chains, that creates that really great curly cue shape. That's really all there is to making crochet curly cues. You can of course play with your stitch height. Uh, if you're making them for another project, um, play with a number of you know stitches worked into each one. But the basic idea here is just working a whole bunch of stitches in each one of these chains will essentially cause it to curl around on itself. Now, this does take a little bit of time, as you can see, especially when we're working this tightly. You really just have to kind of get in there with your hook and find each loop and squeeze those stitches in there. And you can see it's starting to curl up on us already. So we're just gonna continue working three single crochets in each of these chains until we get back down to our body here. Okay, so you can see that I have worked three single crochets in each one of those chains and it has created that really great curly cue look. So back down here where we can work in those unused loops of round four. So we're simply going to slip stitch in the next two round four loops. So go ahead and find those. There's one. And this is of course where we've got our little jog. So this one will be sort of up here, but that's okay. We just slip stitch right in there like so. And then we're ready to make the next tentacle chain 10, skip the chain closest to the hook, and work three single crochets in each remaining chain. However, as you make the remainder of these tentacles, after this first one, you'll note we slip stitched into only two stitches. After the remaining ones, we'll slip stitch into three. So let's go ahead and pull up one of these here so we can see. Of course, I'll manage to pull up the one probably that I did two on, but there we are. So you can see I slip stitched three in between the remaining tentacles, but other than that, they're all perfectly identical. And they might curl up in different ways too. You can see here, this one wanted to curl this way, this one wanted to curl the other way. If you want to, um, you know, if you're one of those people who really want them all the same way, then you can absolutely do that. You just sort of twist it back around to the other direction. So you can have a lot of fun with these. So you just continue to work those all the way around. When you get to the last repeat, you'll just slip stitch in two stitches, break your yarn and sew it down to that very first tentacle you made. And that's all there is to making the octopus egg cozies for the crochet portion. And then of course you can dress it up with buttons from your stash. And that's how to make the Sleepy Bunny, Simple Flower, and Octopus Egg Cozies, all free patterns on mooglyblog.com. Once again, please go to the link in the description where you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, links to each of these written patterns, as well as links to all the wonderful supplies you've seen me use here today. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a great day.